All right, ladies and gentlemen, Baron here, and I am trying out World of Warplanes. Now, I have not played a wargaming game yet. I actually have the uh, the client for World of Tanks, but for some reason, whenever I try to download the updates, it gets to just over 50%, and then it will like come up with some error. So, despite my best efforts to play the game, Wargaming's like, nah, bro, you're not allowed to play. So, needless to say, this is my first experience, so this may take a... And this is just first impressions, just raw first impressions. Now, I don't have an account, I don't have a beta key. If anyone has a beta key they'd like to give me, I'd be more than appreciative of it. Um, a fan of mine gave me his account to use in order to try it out, so thank you, Nebuchadnezzar. And let's see. I guess I want to go to the, the hangar. I guess this is the hangar. So let's check out the tech trees. Um, Alright, so four nations. There is no United Kingdom. That's interesting. It's not like, you know, the Spitfires are, you know, fun to play or anything like that. But, so let's take a look at the aircraft. There's a lot less aircraft than there is in War Thunder. And to my knowledge, they've been, a, you know, both in development, I think around the same... Oh my god. Well, it seems that they both have <laughs> one thing in common, Wargaming and Gaijin, is to just be like, Oh, sorry Japan, we're not going to give you many aircraft. Now, what the heck is this thing? Sendan. There's some crazy, crazy looking Japanese aircraft here. Now, I've, I've read about this one. I haven't done a whole lot of research, but these things were more of like prototypes and concepts, I think, than actual fighting aircraft. So aside from the fact that Japan has no bombers to speak of and a bunch of uh, imaginary planes, the Germans, Germans, yeah, Japan's just kind of been forgotten in United Kingdom altogether. Um, we do have the Stormovix. What is this? Huh. Interesting. So this is like the secret weapons and concepts and delusions of World War II. What is that? Yeah, like, uh, what's going on? They have a saber. I don't know. This is, this is news to me. This is some strange aircraft. So, anyway, the tech trees are completely different. It seems like whereas Gaijin has gone for of a more, I guess, what? They made the pancake. I remember looking this, reading about this thing on Wikipedia years ago. The fact that, <laughs> that it's a playable aircraft in this game is kind of funny. I don't think I'd ever, I mean, I'd, I'd have to try it, obviously. So, yeah. That is, uh, this is just some crazy stuff here. And there's no bombers to speak of in this, uh, currently. So Gaijin, Gaijin, Gaijin went for more historically accurate aircraft, I think. And fleshed out more that actually fought in the war. Whereas, uh, Wargaming seems to spend a lot of time with some crazy, crazy... <laughs> <laughs> crazy looking aircraft oh man so there is that and there's no bombers so now how to start a game to battle who do I want to be the Americans or the that one just looks like it sucks I'll go with hit points oh yeah hit points how awesome is this sarcasm so the Japanese have the lowest hit points firepower 27 28 
34. I will go with the Americans because of firepower. So, I don't really know what to expect. I don't know if I have multiple aircraft to choose from. Now, don't make your impression on like, well, I don't know what aircraft to choose. This is truly just a virginal experience to show you my my impressions. First time playing a wargaming game, first off, and then trying out World of Warplanes and seeing if my uh, experience in War Thunder will help me at all. Now, I probably should have looked at the controls. So what do we got? In War Thunder, it seems like the tiers go up to level 20, whereas here it only goes up to level 10. And you have carrier-based fighters, attack aircraft, heavy fighters, and then fighters. So no bombers, no attackers like you'd find in War Thunder. Which is interesting because... There's a lot of iconic air by not even using a t uh, you know attack type aircraft. Uh, let's see. Where's my roll? Let's see. Controls. World of Tanks mouse. What the heck? What do I want World of Tanks. Hmm. Uh, launch rockets. Pitch left. Oh, that's. What am I doing? Pitch up. Roll left. Roll right. Don't worry about my yard, my rudder. Okay, this this needs to change. Uh, all right, that's that should be better now. That would be pretty terrible if I didn't do anything about that. Now, I guess I won't really do anything else. Whoa. Okay, well that's not gonna work. Uh, I would like to change this, please. Uh, get back to the battlefield. So, I'm unable... Holy goodness. Alright, this is not working. Am I flying this aircraft or someone else? Truly. Now... Well, I like when you pause, at least it levels out. Mouse version, here we go. Okay. Now, now I... Oh my god. Mouse version. Alright, are there any other players in here? Someone? Anyone? Bueller? Alright, there's dots over here. Aha! Now this feels like I'm supposed to be flying a joystick. Um, now I could be mistaken, but friendly base is under attack. Why are there bases if we don't have bombers or attack aircraft? Silly. So needless to say, this is uh, some tricky stuff. Alright, um, it's definitely, definitely harder. Because I have no idea what I'm really doing. I just want to shoot at someone. Feel my wrath and stuff. Ha! What do you think of that? What the heck? Okay, so shift is not boost like you would have it in War Thunder. Now this this is going to be a little biased. I am a War Thunder player and uh, that's really my first whoa my first flight sim, not even flight sim per se, but just flying game. 
because I don't really fly full real battles. Goodness, man. All right, this has got to change. So, all right, mouse version. Roll the tanks mouse. Let's try that. All right, that that makes sense. Go back to the battlefield. Autopilot. Yeah, I forgot. I totally forgot about that. What well, if if autopilot put me into the ground? Um, that would be pretty awesome. I like that. You know, I would appre I would appreciate that. Hey, I, I think I hit that guy. So basically, the controls are really wonky. They're not very intuitive, um, unless of course. I mean, I'd imagine with a joystick. That, uh, come on, gotta kill something. The heck? Get back to the battlefield! Unlike. Oh, did I, did I kill that guy? No. Alright, well, I am still alive. So, the mighty Nebuchadnezzar. He's probably watching this like, oh my gosh, you are terrible. And you know what? That is completely accurate. So you can't see and look around. Tell you what. Really underestimated how good and intuitive the arcade mode and simplified controls are. The maps look kind of cool. Maybe not necessarily like... They look pretty cool. I mean, we, what? We're in some desert and there's some awesome castle where I'm going to have dinner tonight. You know, after I sortie out and slay five to ten enemy planes. But, huh. You can't tell how far they are, as far as I'm aware. This is truly a first time. Now, first time playing War Thunder, it was different. And that's the bias. I feel like, yeah, there's definitely someone behind me. Time to do a somersault. So that's definitely disorienting. Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Huh. Alright, yeah, you take him out, dude. Not a big fan. It's not to say I can't become a big fan, but I mean, what do they say? If first impressions are very important, because they are. Video games, I think it's even more so. Especially if it's a free-to-play game. I didn't buy it. I don't have to have to keep playing this thing to you know feel like I made a good purchase. Man, this guy's. Just doing crazy maneuvers. Yeah, come on. Let's show off this amazing health bar system. Now, what is the crosshairs? I guess that's where. Okay, I get it now. All right, I get this crosshair and dot system. What is that little puttering? Does that mean I'm running out? I can do these maneuvers even when I don't know what I'm doing. Oh shit. Yeah, I, I definitely knew what I was doing there, guys. Trust me. Well, the fact that we have an amazing... Oh, am I dead now? Is that like it? Alright, right click to switch between allied aircraft. Oh, I'm done. Escape, back to the hangar. Enter a battle in another aircraft. Back to the hangar. Exit battle and return to the hangar? Uh, no, not yet. So, aside from not very intuitive controls, now I am saying that with the caveat that I am not a flight sim player. I am not your typical uh, you know pilot jockey video game player 
I'm a, a casual gamer, I guess you could say, with experience in strategy and first-person shooters and all the goodness. But if you're going to make a free-to-play game, I think you should really focus on the controls because no matter how polished the game looks, no matter how awesome the uh, <coughs> tech trees are or are not, despite all of that, despite how cool your hangar looks, even with your get airborne sign and your fancy lighting and my office up there where I'm playing War Thunder, I mean, but you need to have good controls. That is the whole, you know, make your impression with someone in the first 30 seconds. If someone's like, ah, okay, I, I may not be good yet, but I can figure the game out, they are more likely to play the game. So my opinion, uh, well, I gotta give this thing another chance, obviously. I need to learn the controls. I need to look up a YouTube video of where people explain the World of Warplanes controls and, you know, all of that good stuff. Whereas with maybe another flight game like War Thunder, I didn't have to do that. Intuitiveness, man. It hooked me, got me in, looked gorgeous. This looks good, but the hangar looks cool, but the maps, I don't know. Big desert with a castle and some rivers. No, no air target, or no ground target, so it's just like this aerial duel without any, anything to kind of center the players, aside from the fact that Autopilot, which, oh yes, definitely was invented in World War II. I mean, I guess that, that makes sense, but I don't know, enough of this rambling. My opinion is... So, there you go. I'm Baron, and thank you, Nebuchadnezzar, and now I understand why you are so uh, willing to give up this account. Anyway, I hope this game does some stuff, because you want... War Thunder to have some competition so that they may uh, fix that economy model and uh, maybe listen to their player base more instead of having a you know unofficial monopoly over a certain type of game. So I'm Baron. Thanks for watching. And this was a very terrible, rough play and first impressions <laughs> on this game. Peace.